Hey guys, this is Martin again from CRZ and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, DMX and what is DMX? Well, basically DMX is a digital signals uh, electronic protocol that it's used for uh, the control of lighting on stage uh, and also other props and other things that people use on stage. Um, DMX is not only applicable to stage uh, performance uh, at all, it's also applicable to um, residential setups, commercial setups, and they could allow you to control lighting and other things um, all independently from a single control source. So basically, how did DMX get started? Well, uh, back in about 1986, the USITT, um, which is the United States Institute for Theater Technology, developed a protocol that would be compatible with everything. So they pretty much set up a standard protocol so that uh, manufacturers could develop products that all worked on a single protocol so everything could be compatible. And basically, as the time went by, um, it was perfectioned and revised by ESTA. Um, ESTA eventually merged with PLASA, which is, a, which is another organization, and they perfected the, the protocol to what it is today. So basically, how does DMX work? Well, uh, essentially, you know, uh, you need something that's going to generate your DMX signal. And, you know, um, Back in the day, they had regular mixers, and they still use them today, which look uh, pretty much kind of like uh, audio mixers. And they have faders. They have like a master dimmer and dimmers for each individual channel. This one here is a little six-channel mixer. It could be used for small applications. Um, but then there's also a little bit more advanced uh, uh, things out there like a computer USB interface which comes with its software so you install the software in your computer you connect this via a USB cable and then it outputs DMX through here so instead of having a big long board with 512 channels uh, with this you have them all on your computer screen so it's a lot you know, easier to access, easier to work, and it allows you to set presets, uh, shows, so it gives you more liberty to create uh, more spontaneous and, and cooler effects. So, basically, um, obviously to use DMX, you need fixtures that work through DMX. Um, you can use uh, moving heads, you can use LED lighting, you can use a bunch of different different cool uh, fixtures that work with DMX. But remember, to work all this, you need to start with your DMX source. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what DMX is and how it works. Um, it sends individual signals to channels. So, a DMX universe has 512 channels. That's one DMX universe. And each channel uh, allows to be controlled individually. So basically, when you have a DMX fixture, you know, let's say a moving head or an LED panel or whatever it is, um, it's going to have an address. The address is the starting DMX address that the fixture starts on. And each fixture is going to have a number of channels that it's going to operate on. So for example, an RGB LED panel is pretty much only going to have three channels because uh, one's for the red, for the R, Another one's for the G, for the green, and another one's for the B, which is the blue. So, you know, it's going to use three channels, and you got to set the starting DMX address. Usually, if you're just starting the DMX line, it's going to be an address 001. Um, but let's say you add it down the line or whatever, you got to set it to the next available DMX channel. So let's just start with 001. So now it's at 001, and it's going to take up channels 001, 002, and 003. So now you know which channel this is going to be operating on. So you set the fixture to the address 001, which is the starting DMX address. Um, fixtures are addressed with a variety of options. Some of them may have a digital display, which you just click up and down and set to the address. And some of them are a little bit more complicated. Uh, they use binary code dip switches. They have a series of dip switches on the side, which then you flip on and off and each dip switch has a value. So by adding the values, you reach the desired DMX address. So basically, once you have your DMX address set, uh, now you know where the DMX address is starting on that fixture. Uh, the subsequent uh, fixtures that you're going to add on need to be in the next available DMX address. So if the first one's taking up 001, 002, and 003, the next available one would be 004. So if you want to put another fixture that's going to work independently 
from the first one, you must put it on 004, which is the next available one. If you were to put both of them on 001, they would both work the same, like, you know, like if they were uh, hooked up together. Um, but if you set them on different addresses, you can control them individually. So if you want one to be blue and you want the other one to be amber, then basically what you do is you set them on different addresses. So that's pretty much uh, how this works. And, um, you know, DMX could be applied to a lot of things. Uh, now people are using it for their uh, home installations. And, you know, it, it, it's good because it allows you for control over your home lighting from one single source instead of going to a switch in every part of the house and flipping everything on from there. Uh, this also allows you for the dimming. So, you know, instead of always being all the way on or all the way off, you know, you could choose your different levels of dimming that, that you desire. Um, there's a lot of advances in technology today, so you could probably run your whole house system off an iPad app and control all, all your lighting from there. So, you know, DMX is really advanced and it continues to evolve every day. And there's a lot more options available. So, you know, if, if you guys have any questions about it, how it works, or, you know, about the addressing or anything like that, you guys could drop us a comment there on the YouTube comment box. And um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.